And now to the economy, specifically dating in this dismal economic time. Should you follow your heart or find out your date's credit score? We asked around to see whether this downturn has affected dating at all. Prior to the recession, you might talk about it maybe if you get engaged. I've been married for two years now. Um, we got married in October of 06, so uh, that conversation probably would have to have been very different uh, in 2008. I mean, is it polite now to talk about your credit scores? I think so, but yeah, I guess like, What's when I was in high school, mine's two. <laughs> right now, um, my boyfriend's in between jobs. We're very open, but it's there are some areas that we don't don't have fun talking about. I have to say, I think my dating life has improved given the recession. Instead of going to a really expensive meal, I went on a date last night um, to Central Park at 3 a.m. You date because it's exciting and fun and you get to go experience new places and eat at new restaurants and then now all it seems like my boyfriend and I are doing are changing into sweats when we get home and watching reruns of House. I think that this is a time where you really can see if people are ambitious, if they're creative, if they're resilient too and I think these are qualities that are much more important than if a person has money. Like that, joining us now, Brent Kessel, author of It's Not About the Money, a financial game plan for staying safe, sane, and calm in any economy. And Dr. Christine Whelan, author of Mary Smart, The Intelligent Woman's Guide to Finding True Love. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. So when do you think we should have the money conversation, and what should that conversation include, Christine? Well, on the first date, it's probably not the time to be bringing up money. It's a time to get to know somebody. You want to get to know somebody off paper, not just about comparing resumes and credit scores, but really getting to know their personality. Of course, you know, if you've just been laid off, this is going to be topic A, so you've really got to tread carefully in those early interactions. What do you say, Brent? Well, I've had this conversation with clients who are in their first few months of dating where my client is wealthy, let's say, and the person she's dating is not. Um, and I've had it with people who've been married for 25 years. The important thing to me is that there are two elements to the conversation. The first is to recount an emotionally charged experience you had with money that led to the way you handle money today. And the second is to talk about the practicalities, sharing credit scores, pay stubs, tax returns, investment statements, to make sure that you get everything out in the open and lay a good foundation for your future. The first point that you make I think is so important. It's not necessarily how much money you have, but how you handle the money that you do have. Christine, Absolutely, you agree? and your idea, your ideas about ambition, about perseverance, about drive. You know, it's these kind of personality traits that are going to really keep a person going forward when times get a little bit better. It's not just about how much money you have now, it's about what your goals are for the future. Future. And since dating is a, a long-term a long-term trial kind of run to see whether you're going to have a relationship with someone, you, you want to make sure that this is a good person to invest in in the future. Anything you should do now that we're in a recession that maybe you wouldn't have done before when it comes to dating? Well, the key thing in a recession is when people get stressed and anxious about money, they tend to stick to their old tried and true habits like intensely. So if I'm into retail therapy, I'm probably going to do even more of that. If I'm an investor who jumps in and out of the market and is constantly changing things, I'm probably doing even more of that now. So people's money types really come out in a big way in a recession. You can learn a lot by paying attention. Let's talk about that. You identify eight money types in your book. Yeah. Four, the four that you say are most prevalent are the guardian, who's always alert and careful, the pleasure seeker, who prioritizes the here and now, the saver, who seeks abundance through security, and the innocent, who believes and hopes that life will work out for the best. I assume you don't want to be a pleasure seeker in this economy. Well, it depends. It all depends how how balanced you are and it really depends if you're aware of your blind spots so the person to steer clear of is the one who thinks they have no blind spots we all have blind spots we all have blind spots even the savviest investors most sophisticated business people have learned in this economy that they have blind spots too the guardians blind spot is that they can get worried and anxious and controlling when times get tough the pleasure seekers blind spot is kind of what you alluded to you can just go out and shop and shop and shop uh -huh. till you drop the savers blind stop is being blind spot is being too frugal too tight with money and really not having much fun in the relationship and um, you really the innocence blind spot is kind of putting their head in the sand avoiding looking at money at all and we've all learned where that gets you yeah, none of us can afford to do that thank you so much Christine Brent Thanks appreciate so your time you can read excerpts from Mary Smart and it's not about the money on our website earlyshow.cbsnews.com